All right, so good morning, everybody. It is February 3rd, 2022, and I'm here doing uh, a lecture on the Illusions Block of the Month, Block One. So welcome. Um, it's been fun to teach people the particulars of quilting. And I have a list of products. Good morning, Mary. You don't have to unmute, but I recognize that you're here. Um, so I'm gonna talk about a lot of products. I'm going to talk about what to watch out for and go through some of the instructions, but most importantly, the cutting guide. So the very first thing that I talk about is what you get with your first block of the month. Um, also yesterday, the block two went through the system and we've got most of those, if not all, that are being shipped, packed up, ready to be picked up this morning by the, by the US Postal Service. So you can look forward to that coming soon. And I also have some envelopes like this that didn't make the package. And what's inside is a little yellow envelope of all of the squares of fabric. Because the very first thing that we're going to do, you can see here, is we are going to make our cutting chart and get familiar with all of the different colors that are in your block of the month. And that is in your, we sent out all of the instructions the very first month. And I think it's like page two, a good place to start. They do have a printout that you would, that we, did we? No, we printed this out, but you got some actual copies that the company sent us. Um, but it's still good to do your color chart of your fabrics so you know what they are. It's getting up close and personal with all of the different colors that are in your kit. So eventually you can pick it up and say, okay, well, obviously this one's the purple and this one is the rust. And there's three different background colors that are used in block one. And Mary Ream, we did send you an extra piece in the mail. So you'll be getting that with your block number two. So this is block number one. It's just your plain background. And this is block background number two, the seeds kind of on an ivory. And I did point out on this, if you look really close at, this is the wrong side and this is the right side. You probably can't tell right now, um, but you have to look at these batiks because some do definitely have a right side and a wrong side for batik. If you mix this one up, no big deal. It's really hard to tell. This one, the gray seeds, I can't tell right or wrong if you can, but what you think is the right side. And then the other background piece that we're not using in block number one is this gray fabric that has black lines on it. And it does definitely have a right and a wrong side because the black is only on one side. So I think you'll all be fine once you get your little package of squares to discern what is what. The three that were probably the most challenging that were similar, see if I can find all the colors here, are the teals and the green, because there's three different ones. And let me see if I can find. Oh, 
find one of them. I ended up with some leftover triangles and that's normal. We're not in that one either. Well, on the color chart, there is a light green down here and it definitely has green tones to it. So there's a lot of black printed on these and they do have metallic on the right side. So the little dots of metallic, it's very subdued. That is the right side. So you always have to make sure that you have the right side. And it's definitely looks like the wrong side on these batiks. So all of the bright colors do have do have metallic on them. So this is the green, the light green. And then we have the bright teal, which is this one. So these two do look different. You might see a little bit of that light teal or light the, the teal in the green. And then there's a dark teal. And that's the one that I don't seem to have a piece in my pile. I have a pile here. So anyway, um, the dark teal just seems to have more black in it. At least this cut that I have right here has more black in it. So when you're, the very first thing that you do is you sort out your fabrics and you put together your cutting chart. Easy enough. And I glued mine class. We taped it when we had our lecture. And that was a good feeling just to know what fabrics you're going to work with. The next important part, every month you will get a cutting diagram included in your kit. So this is month one fabric cutting diagram. So get familiar with it, read it, look at the sizes, look at how it is laid out. Um, when I cut mine, I cut it exactly like this. So on top, you have background number one, which is this up here. And then you have background number two, which would be the seeds, the lighter seeds. And then you have background number three, which is this piece right here. So when you look at your cutting diagram, you don't have a lot of waste. Also, you can see the fabric is butted up on this side, as well as this side. You have a little bit of leftovers off to the right. So where would you put your salvage? You would put it where it's not going to be a part of the block. So those are some of the thinking things that you need to do before you cut. So we want to think before we cut. Do I have my cutting diagram? Am I looking at the sizes? Now, this um, block background number two, when I looked at this line here to begin with, I thought, well, why did they put two blocks over here, then a big one, and then three blocks over here? These look the same as this side, but they're not. They are not the same. This, these first two blocks are five and three quarters. Then this is the big one, seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And then you have three in a row that are five and a half. So five and three quarters and five and a half. He put the cutting diagram to put the big one in the middle to draw attention that this side is different from this side. And I thought, that's a good thing that he did that. Because <laughs> if we're rushing and, and just cutting, then we might get that wrong. So pay attention to how the layout is and notice fabric number six is really small. You're gonna cut a two and a half inch by two and a half inch square out of fabric six. 
So fabric six, if you look at your cutting diagram, all of those fabric colors are, or numbers are on the side of the blocks. So fabric number six is the dark teal. So when you get your package, make sure you lay out all your fabric and you can identify what they all are. So I use sticky notes. I had a table set out and I labeled fabric one through nine. And I, once I identified what they were, then I put my sticky note on top of those um, different fabric colors. And then I looked at my cutting diagram and I laid it out. And then I looked at my cutting diagram and then I laid it out. And then I looked at my cutting diagram and I laid it out. And then when I was sure that I was going to cut the right way, then I cut. So, so that's what you really have to do for these things because there isn't a lot of extra fabric. Um, if you get into a bind, we will send you some because we are through cutting. I do have more people that want to join in, so I'm considering ordering some fabric. I'm just not sure how long it's going to take. And I know for those people, it's gonna cost them a little bit more because fabric has gone up since this initial order last year. I ordered this, I don't remember if it was last spring. It was a long time ago. It seems like every month, I am getting emails from all the vendors on rising prices for our fabric. Just what it is. It's not terrible though. Um, it's not like it's doubled or anything, but it is creeping up. So now that that's the main thing. If you can read instructions and read the cutting, the cutting diagram, you know, getting your arms wrapped around this and then reading the instructions. I'm going to go through that too, because there's some things that I want you to be watchful of. Um, that, then you'll have success. And then with the combination of what products I have, I have a whole bunch of products off to the side. I'll go through and tell you how those are all used and how they can help you. So if we look at your pattern and the very first one is month one after the cutting chart, talks about the background pieces. So, and it kind of matches what the cutting diagram says. So he's talking about, first of all, cutting from the fabric number two, which is this ivory seed color, to cut those two five and three quarters inch squares. And then you need to subcut them into, uh, subcut them diagonally and make those four quarter square triangles. And as you look through the instructions, it's printed in red um, where he talks about fabrics three, four, seven, and eight. So I looked over at my table and I eyeballed three, four, seven, and eight. And I said, okay, I have to cut those colored fabrics at five and three quarters square. And then I'm gonna subcut diagonally on those but notice what it says in red. Yes, we're gonna make four square, quarter square triangles, but you're only gonna use two of them. And on the seven and a quarter inch um, square, you're gonna make, of course, four of them, and you're only gonna use one. So you're gonna cut out the square, cut it out on diagonals, and only use one triangle. That is why I have a bunch of triangles left over and of different sizes. So you will have some leftover triangles when you're done because you're gonna be making these. I don't know if we use them in the future, but common sense tells me I'm gonna label them 
and I'm going to just hold on to them. And I was even thinking, man, this is almost enough to make another square, <laughs> another block. Not quite, though. I mean, if you had some other background fabric, you could. So before I cut, because of all the bias with the triangles, we need to stabilize our fabric somehow. So what I did, obviously people know about best press. So we've got bottles of best press. This is just a small size that I had in the classroom. So what I ended up doing is I used this on my colored fabrics because on my background fabrics, I chose to use a little bit of Tyrael Magic. Tyrael Magic is like the big guns. It is a starch. I use it a lot in embroidery. Why am I turning it? There we go. And I, can, I pour it in one of our mister bottles because these are really, they, they spray such a fine mist. And we go through this stuff quite a bit. And in our store, we do have a sample where we have a two and a half inch strip. Part of it is starched with this stuff and the other side is not. You can layer this. So I go with my spray mister and then I iron. And by ironing, I mean pressing, not going and moving the fat, move iron on top of the fabric because you will warp it. To just stabilize it with the Tyrael Magic and press down. And then you can test your fabric. Does it seem like it has enough on it? If not, you can spritz it again and then press it some more. You can keep layering this enough such that it'll feel like paper. Your fabric will feel like paper. So I don't recommend doing that much that it feels like paper. Sometimes when we're doing embroidery projects, we want that because then we don't get puckers. But use your judgment. I use this on my background fabric, and then I use Best Press on top because I didn't want them both super stiff. Good morning. So, <clears throat> so that's what I did prior to cutting is I stabilized my fabric. Then when we were sewing, to set up for sewing, I changed my rotary blade. And the only blades that I really buy anymore for the shop are these endurance blades. Endurance blades, up here it says endurance. I would never make a good weatherman because it's hard to point and be backwards. But these endurance blades truly do last longer. It says on the package it lasts twice as long. And we definitely have noticed a difference in the shop here. So that's really all that I buy. And as far as rotary cutters go, let me grab my. I have an older rotary cutter at home. And here in the shop, what we use are these Ulfa splashes. They're just a really simple type of rotary cutter. They're not super expensive. I'm so habitually used to opening and closing. I cut and then I close it right away. It's just a motion that I'm so used to doing. But what I like about these is they don't have that washer, that annoying washer that some of them have. So if I wanted to change this blade, all I have to do is pull down on this like that, and this comes out. So there is no washer that is in this. It's just these two pieces. So then I put it back in and then I just 
push up and it locks it into place. Has anybody ever had that annoying washer and you take it apart and you wonder, well, how does this go back together? You don't have that with these. Next, also for cutting, obviously you could do five and three quarters and five and three quarters and stop there, but how do you prevent from cutting into this seven and a quarter inch block? What I did is I used a Frick's pen, and we've got these packs of blue, purple, and pink, and I have these at home. I don't color with these like where you're going to see. You would never want to use it on the middle of a block, say like this piece here, because you do risk having a ghost line. But what I like about the Frixion pen, they do make Frixion markers too, but these with pens, you can just make a smaller dot. And so when I was cutting, I put, I measured, and then I would put a very small dot where I wanted to cut up to. So you have to stop before you get into the bigger block in here, right there. But you can put that exact intersection right here, just before in this corner. So where you want to put that dot, I put an arrow is right there. And then stop before it if you need to, don't cut into that big block. And then, um, you know, I, all of the dis, all of the supplies that I'm showing you, I'm giving everybody 10% off of the price, just so you have the ability to get what you need. The other thing is like when measuring, and that includes like these quilter select rulers. What I like about the quilter select rulers is they do not slide at all. I don't know what the magic potion is on the back. But the other thing that I like is all of these lines. There's 30 degrees, 45 and 60 degree angles coming from all sides. So if you wanted to line up your triangles, do it using the right angle. And then the other thing I like about these rulers is that they have thick lines and they have thin lines. It's hard to mess up this three by 12 because there are no half inch on the sides. Some rulers, they'll have an extra half an inch hanging off like the six and a half inch ruler. So this side, when I have this corner, it has half inch here and half inch here. Typically, I don't use that side. I'll flip it around and I'll use this side where it's one inch. I won't get much with the one inch. I see sunshine coming in and kind of glaring on my background. So that just means it's really cold outside. <laughs> and again, there's all these different angles. Now I like block locks, but for this project, I chose to use the Quilter Select for squaring up my, my um, half square triangles or quarter square triangles because it does not move. And I have all of these lines that I can work with. So when you're laying things out, well, you know what? I didn't grab my block. Hang on one second. Okay, so this is block number one that we're making, and I think they probably have it like this. This would be the top. Okay, so there's lots of triangles in there. So when you're squaring things up, 
like these blocks here, you can lay your ruler on it and get the angles going this way as well as this way. And as long as you sew a quarter inch seam, you'll end up having that be perfect. So as far as checking your seam allowances, the very first thing that you wanna do is test it. So measure, measure your seam allowances. And in fact, in the instruction booklet, let me think here, one and a half plus one and a half. I think it said to take three one and a half inch strips, sew them together, one and a half inch by three and a half inch, sew them together and see if you end up with a three and a half inch square. Hopefully I'm saying that right. I don't have my instructor book in front of me, but you want to make sure that you are indeed sewing a quarter inch um, and not more than. So I, from what I saw on our sew day in-house here, because every month I'm having a lecture followed by a sew day. And virtually I'm doing a lecture and then I've added a virtual sew day. So you guys can all talk together. And whether you are local or not, you can always do the virtual too. You can do them all if that's what you would like to do. That's not a problem at all. But you, that way I figured you can confer with each other. I'll check in at the beginning just to make sure that there aren't any questions. Um, that I can answer and then you'll just sew. So that's easy enough to do. Okay, I'm gonna break right now. Does anybody have any questions for me? You can unmute yourself. Take a drink of coffee. <laughs> okay, if not, we'll, we'll continue on. What I'll talk about now is the piecing. When you are piecing, I'm gonna do a little demo here. Say if you piece a couple of fabrics together, and this is a double-sided same piece of color, but what's the problem of using a pin to hold your fabric? You see any kind of bumps? It kind of distorts your fabric, right? So when you're taking smaller pieces like triangles and you're piecing with another triangle, the same size, having that bump, the distortion of a pin can change things enough that it's not gonna be truly accurate. So I was introduced to a product that's called Acorn Precision Piecing. And there's two parts to it, okay? The first part is this glue and it it's a temporary, like a glue base, but how it works is you put your glue onto your fabric where you would have a pin and just a little tiny dot. It has a super tiny um, spout on it. Yeah, this one is nice and clean. It would be kind of hard to tell, but it's just a little tiny dot that you would put on your fabric and then you press it. You just put a hot iron on it and it holds your fabrics together. And you sew your seam, your quarter inch seam. And then when you're done, this is almost gone already. Then you take this, it's like a marker. You pour 
this solution that comes with it into the empty marker. And then when you put it onto your seam, you just put it on the high side of your seam and then you press it. And I tell you what, it is the flattest seam that you will ever have. I know it's kind of hard to tell on here, but there are no bumps. Now, batiks lay pretty flat. They press nicely, but this precision piecing is really a, a game changer, particularly if you have like normal quilting cottons that might be a little thicker and it has that bump or your seams don't stay pressed nicely on the inside. This is a magical solution. A lot of people have purchased it. I was sold out, but I do have more in stock now. And it's awesome. I've had people come into the shop that got an, you know, started right at the beginning of the month and have their block done. And they said, wow, that was kind of cool. That I've never heard of that before. And that was a neat thing that I learned. So give that a try. It's really really cool. And I do have big refill bottles of this because I know this is going to be a game changer. In fact, I have a couple um, gallon solutions of it too. So Pam, what, yeah. do, you, what do you use more of the, the glue or the fat press, the seam pressing part? Well, they're meant to be used together. Uh, yeah, but I wondered if one used quick more quickly. Just well, it curious. comes together in a package. Yeah. Um, I think, well, certainly that flattener uh -huh. is really, really cool. I mean, yeah. there, like, there are certain fabrics that I've worked with. And again, they're, they're kind of like the thicker cottons. They just don't stay pressed. Right. They'll stay pressed with that. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. They, and they're used pretty evenly then. Yeah, yeah. I just go along the seam line and then press and it stays down. Okay, cool. great. Okay. As far as thread goes for this project, we're just using the 2600 Dove Aurafil throughout. If you wanted to do other colors, you can, but I'm just keeping it simple with this. So if you want to pick up a spool, either the, the big cone or the smaller spool like this, it's a good time to get 10% off. Aurafil's gone up in price too, like everything. So I think I've covered most of the supplies that you need for block number one. And again, you're going to be using these throughout the quilt. Um, there are two pieces of supplies that you need for block number two, because that one is applique. And I have a package of Stima Seam 2 light, because we'll put that on the back of the fabric and then cut out our circles. And then just a lightweight stabilizer for the background. When we stitch the applique down, we don't want our stitches our thread to get buried inside of the fabric. So we will use that. So there are some paper piece blocks. Some months, some months there's appliques. Jess did a beautiful job on this block. This is block number two. And so these circles are done by applique. So nothing too scary as far as, hopefully you can see that okay. You're not sewing curves, you're just sewing an applique. So you'll learn the intricacies, whatever, I can't speak this morning, intricacies of <laughs> blanket stitch. I think I need more coffee. <laughs> And then here's a paper piece block. This one is month eight. So this entire block here is paper piece, but you'll, you'll learn how to do that as well. The other ruler 
is the 12 and a half inch block, block lock. And I use this one because every block has a bigger block in it. So this big block right here, and this is 12 and a half inch. And it should turn out pretty perfect, but I did take just a sliver off of a couple of sides on mine. And I don't know if it was from ironing and not pressing, because you can warp your fabric by doing that. Um, but somehow I did manage to just trim just a little bit of it. And then this is the, the special background fabric. It's 108 wide petite that is made for this block of the month. Scott Flanagan is the designer of the batiks and it pulls out all the colors from the top of the quilt. So everybody's quilt blocks are going to be exactly the same. What's different is the border that you chose, the border color. Um, and the batik back is really nice. It's not most, it's, it's good quality fabric. When it comes to quilting cotton, say anything Moda, if you have, oh, I don't know, trying to think of some of their designs that they have, thatched, for example. Thatched, you can get in a 45 inch bolt that you would find anywhere. And then the 108, it's, gonna, it's not going to be the same grayish good as the 45 inch blocks or 45 inch bolts. Um, whereas this backing feels just as nice as what you would find on your 45 inch bolts of fabric. So I was very impressed with it. Um, I think that this is the third time that I've done this lecture. So I think I have probably gotten more comfortable with it. What time is it? 10 o'clock. We started at 9.30. Wow. I went through that fast. Does anybody have any questions? Last time you mentioned the needles you used. Oh yeah, they're right here. <laughs> Thanks, Shirley. This is, a, so when it comes to needles, you have a continuum. They're sharp on one side and there is ballpoint on the other. In the middle, you have your universal. Universal, um, I, I have now learned to stay away from universal needles. Um, but you want a sharp needle for batik. And so a sharp needle would be a jeans needle, a Microtex needle. Um, and I, I am using what Sylvain Bergeron recommends. Sylvain Bergeron is an educator at Bernina. And he's Mr. Personality. He's got quilts in the Paducah History Museum. He is so knowledgeable in everything sewing. He's done garments. He sews his own clothes. He does just wonderful things. And he's very good with his vocabulary choices when he is lecturing. He really paints a great picture. I use the 70 size jeans needle, which is a small needle. If you go up, you can get up to even 110 on a jeans needle. That would be for jeans. So don't let the, the word jeans needle or denim scare you. The size down here is a size 70. So it's a thin, sharp needle. So if you look up Sylvain Bergeron, you'll find him everywhere on YouTube. And he's got the round glasses. He's coming to my shop the end of September um, for 29th, 30th, and October 1st. So we're going to do a Bernina boot camp with him. I still have to talk to him and work out details as far as his cost goes. I have a general idea. 
I'm sticking my neck out to get him here, but I know he's going to, we're all going to learn so much from him. So Bernina boot camp with Sylvain, the end of September. So Shirley, you'll have to plan your vacation around that. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's an exciting guy. I'm thrilled to have him. So yes, that is the needle that I'm using. Could you also show spinning the seams? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. See, I am forgetting stuff. Yep. Okay. So on this block, so this is your classic block. Oh, and I even brought a quilt in that should have been spun, but I didn't know about it in the pattern directions didn't mention anything about it. So you don't know what you don't know. But on this block, this is the 12 and a half inch block inside of block number one. Once you're done piecing, so first of all, you're going to make the burgundy square here with the two seed pieces. So you start out with that. Then you put your wings on the green over here and this other seed triangle. So now you have created, let's see if I can hold this straight. You have created this triangle here. So you're gonna make four of them. And when you piece them, the first time that you piece them together, it'll be like this section right here, there and there the seam across. And then you will be able to go all the way across and do half of the triangle. Well, once you do the other side, yes, and there's nesting and different things, um, eventually you're going to end up where, if I can pull this back, This was my last seam that I did. So you end up with all of these in the middle and they're sewn all the way to the end. Well, what you do is you pick out a couple of the stitches, not this seam, but just up to that seam so you can open them up and get all colors to show. So it makes like a little bit of a square. Now you can go to Google or to YouTube and search for any videos. There's lots of videos on twirling a seam, but that's what this ends up being. So as as you look at it, there's this seam, this seam, this seam, and this seam, and they make a pinwheel. They're all pointed iron to this direction. So then when you get to this center and unpick it, you can open it. So on this side, you don't have the big bump. And also, I've Miss Marita, I've been I've been using um, um in, at the quilt shop I'm at. I've been using her gamel, and her uh -huh. gamel hates, I absolutely oh, yeah. hates those intersections. Oh yeah, so with the long armor, I really appreciate it when you when everybody takes the time to flatten those those. Oh yeah, those yeah. So I haven't ever broken a needle with my machine, but. Yeah, you certainly could because they could be really thick. And, and you, and you, you when you're risk going over those seams. You risk poking a hole in the quilt. You don't want to do yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah. as piecers, you know, if you can do that for your long armor, it would be awesome. Yes. <laughs> Thank and you. Having having neat seams like this makes a difference too. So he does give you directions for pressing some of the things, but not all of the seams. So 
first of all, when you're sowing, I think he did the burgundy first. When you're sowing the dark to the light, you press them to the dark side. And that's what I have here. You can see it's pressed this, this direction. But once you're putting the whole square together, I open up my seams. Again, it's just so it lays flat. So this side is to the dark side. This side is to the dark side. You can nest really well, but then open it up. He doesn't tell you to open it up. That's awesome. Yeah, That's really it, yeah, it makes, a, it makes a difference. And then when you're adding these wings, it's okay to press it the way that he has. So it makes for a nice, neat backside. Now, when Pam, you, two, could you could you hold that up again? I want to take a picture. Sure, please. Is that centered right? Good. Thank you. Yep. So when you are, yeah, these these blocks that are the strip on the bottom. Those are done the exact same way. I press the seams open. And you can give yourself a little pat on the back if you make a really nice point like that. And then when you do the squares, you're gonna do these ones first. And those, you end up making the row top row, and then you make the bottom row, and then you stitch those together. So when I stitch those together, I opened up those seams in the middle. Again, it's just to eliminate the bulk. And then when I got to this very last square, now mine, I don't, I couldn't find my little squares. <laughs> so I, these colors are not to the pattern. I just added what I had. So don't look at that block. That's my own, my own thing. But look at what I did on the back side. So once you nest, it is possible for you to twirl those seams too, even though it's not in a pinwheel motion. So that's just kind of fun to do. Once you figure out how to do that, just pick out a couple of stitches is all you need to do. And then just work with your fingers to get them to lay flat and then hit it with an iron. Then you'll be doing it all the time. So it's kind of fun. It's like, hey, I think I can twirl my seam here. So. The designer, Scott Flanagan, doesn't tell you to twirl your seams. That's just something that you should know. And that's what we're going to teach you this time. There's probably other blocks in this block of the month that you'll be using that technique for. So it's all about learning new techniques. Just make, you know, some of the basics. Quarter inch seam. Having good needle, starting out fresh. Um, every six hours or so, no more than eight, change your needle. Change your needle, they get dull. Especially if you're in brighter. Once you have embroidered for two hours, change your needle. <laughs> Embroidery is a lot faster than sewing. So oh, in my mastery class on my PowerPoint, I have a picture of a needle used after four hours, six hours, and eight hours. By eight hours, it looks like a tree stump. The point is gone. So that's the cheapest part of your sewing machine. When my husband is servicing machines, he'll get rid of the old thread and Guterman is not no longer a good quality thread. It used to be, but they sold it a few years back. 
And now you find it in Walmart. If you find it in Walmart, it's not good. <laughs> so a lot of times he'll change, change the needle, change the thread, and it sews better. But then he cleans everything too. And make sure. I, I bought some uh, Gooderman from Walmart and I thought, Gooderman thread. Okay. Well, it kept breaking. I said, Guterman thread isn't so good anymore. Guterman is not good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's made in China now, unfortunately. So all right. I want to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause my recording. So I just want to say thank you so much for uh, joining me today. I hope it was helpful. We're always just a phone call or email away. We do have a Facebook group called Illusions Block of the Month Friends Group um, with Time Flies Quilt and Sew. I've had other people trying to join it, but if you're not on my list, I'm not letting you in. Because <laughs> I knew, do know that this Block of the Month is going around countrywide. But this is just a special group for my gals here. And I'm so pleased that you joined me on this quilting journey. Any other questions? Are there, are there any rulers that you absolutely have to have that I might not have already that I need to purchase from you? Well, um, I did on our last retreat. I don't think you were on our last retreat. We had the owner of Block Lock on. Yeah, I bought I bought those. Okay. Yeah, I like those, but anything quilter select is okay. all worth the money. So these were the ones that I used for block one. You know, these three here. So these are the ones that you get the discount on. Okay. Uh, my eight and a half by 24. I'm out of those right now. They're back ordered. Um, and they've been back ordered for a while now. And I do have the six inch by 24, but the other one, I think it's an eight and a half by 12. I know that that one would be handy too. I don't know if I mentioned, but also on block lock, if you look at the numbers, there's the light numbers and there's the dark numbers. I love the fact that they have that. But more importantly, I love the lines and I love the fact that it's almost like suction. Even if you put these on a bare table, you can feel the suction when you lift it off. They are truly amazing. So anything Coulter Select, including if you ever do applique or embroidery, they have scissors that have a point, a duckbill scissor with a point. Let me show you. You see that? Put it by the white. That point is a game changer. Let me, I can't figure this out. I would never make a weatherman. There we go. That is a game changer, people. Because with this, you keep your scissors flat and you snip. And I say, well, there's the duck for sure. I say a little Pac-Man. So I've been posting pictures of, hang on one sec. I have too many projects going. <laughs> I have this amazing um, Baltimore blooms block that I am embroidering. And there is fabric on here too. It's not all thread, like all of the flowers. This, there's a square of pink fabric that I put on there. And then I have to cut after it's stitched. Of course, it's covered with satin stitch, but you have to get really close to those top stitch lines on that. 
And I do that with these quilter select scissors. So what I'm doing is I am cutting. You can get into it really well. I lift up that fabric and I'm just snipping. So I don't purchase any other applique scissors than these ones. So I have lost <laughs> six pair of these during my classes. So I no longer supply the tools anymore. And I'm sure it's oversight. Nobody would steal intentionally. Sticker on this one, TFQS. <laughs> but yeah, those are like $31 for scissors, but they are so nice. So if you do any applique, Get those scissors. So if you want to order any of the items, I'm going to put this list on the Facebook group. Um, I've been meaning to do that for like a week already. Um, and those are the items that you'll get a discount on. And um, just email me if you want to get anything, because I there's no way that I can give a discount code or put things on sale online without everybody getting it. It's just for you guys. Okay. All righty. Well, I've got a shop full of people. I should go out and meet and greet. So thank you for joining me today. And Thanks, good Pam. Quilting journey. Thank you, Pam.